Hello and welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to deal with a lesser known model, which is the Ottoman or Turkish Cavalry Trooper Sword, model 1909. Before I talk about the sword itself, I believe it is important or worth talking about the historical context of the years that preceded its creation. More specifically, the years that followed the Napoleonic Wars until World War I, or 1910 when it was issued. Because these years are often overlooked in terms of military history, which is a shame because at that time the Ottoman Empire was coming out of a series of conflicts which happened in the Balkans. In these wars, these conflicts significantly drained the army resources. Thus, the army that came out of it was battle-hardened, but underwent several reforms which were based on French and British military structure or standards. Yet eventually the Ottoman Empire decided to go with the German model instead. And this marked the beginning of a long-lasting alliance with the Germans which were to last until the end of World War I, but also cost the Ottoman their empire. When the army joined Germany in World War I in 1914, its army was thus already equipped, or fielded with practical and modern uniforms and equipment. One such example was the trooper sword whose design was very minimalist, yet practical at the same time. The initial order was placed in 1909 with German manufacturers to produce approximately 10,000 of these swords to fully equip the Ottoman cavalry. The initial production of the first batch of swords, which were uh, serial number 1 to number 742, were made with brass hilts, but a change in the contract had them made of steel instead. Perhaps this change was because brass wasn't as practical in desert environment, something that was also observed with French swords when they were used in North Africa. Thus, the definitive 1909 model was composed of a guard that was made of a sheet of steel with turned edges and whose front had a cutout design of the crescent moon and star symbol. Much like older British swords, it was made with a full-time grip, which was joined with black checkered handles, which seemingly were made of celluloid or hard plastic-like material, and these were secured with steel rivets. The back of the handle was made having a thumb rest or thumb groove. In accordance with German military fashion of the time, the curved blades were made pipe back and having a spear point. These swords were chiefly made by the Karl Acorn manufacturer and the Ricasso had the company trademarked that was written in Turkish or Ottoman alphabet. Just below was the Muslim calendar date, which was 1325, which in Western calendar uh, meant 1909, the date designation of the model. Above the trademark was the sword's serial number, which in this case is number 4185. The swords were marked with two inspection stamps, one that was located on the back of the blade and was a crescent moon, and another which was on the pommel nut and it was in the shape of a star. Unfortunately, I don't have the correct scabbard, but the form was not so different from this German specimen. It had a single fixed ring, and the square band on the side for the belt hook attachment. This sword was designed to be strapped to the saddle when mounted. The scabbards were also marked with the crescent moon step on the side or on the front of the mouth. One interesting aspect about the sword itself is the design and more specifically the influence behind such a design. Because for a German sword, uh, this is surprisingly more British in its looks. And uh, this is because if you see, if you take a look at the British model 1890 for the cavalry troopers, the resemblance between the two is amazing. The two swords have a cutout design in the front of the basket shaped or half basket shaped guards. The edges are turned on the sides. 
the sword knot holes are on the same emplacement. They have simplified pommel caps and full tank blades and they have grips which are secured on the sides with steel rivets. The only difference is with the blades, the Ottoman having a pipe back one, whereas the British has a more traditional blade. But you can see the strong British influence behind uh, the design of this sword. And the thing is, uh, it wasn't so uncommon to see foreign uh, influences on swords. Uh, one such example is the Brazilian 1899 cavalry sword, which was also made in Germany. But it was modeled after another British sword, which was the model 1899. Or uh, perhaps it was vice versa, but I have to check which came first. Uh, another example was the British 1908 cavalry sword, which was directly inspired by an experimental German sword that was created in 1886. So there was definitely something going on between uh, the manufacturers and sword makers. Maybe they dealt business trades and exchanged blueprints, ideas or designs. Maybe they simply resorted to stealing or plagiarizing other makers' works. This happened uh, with a specific French sword, and I will cover that in a near future. If some of you sword collectors happen to have uh, sources, books, or websites about Ottoman military swords, it would be very welcome if you could share them, uh, because uh, my own sources are very limited. And I ask because I need info about a specific sword which might be an interior model to the 1909 sword because it is very similar in the shape yet has a different type of blade and different types uh, different type of grip so um, if somebody has info about it or could tell me where i can find some info it would be much appreciated so thank you very much for your uh, presence that day. I hope you have enjoyed the introduction to this lovely sword. Uh, I really like it. It's uh, one thing that I like the most is the balance and the handling because for a pipe back blade, it's not so heavy compared to other German swords and it feels very solid in the hand. It's very elegant, yet minimalist and military in its looks. So definitely a well-made no-nonsense weapon. If you have any comments, critics, or if you have one and would like to express your own opinion, you are more than welcome to do so in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit the like button and uh, to subscribe if you have enjoyed this video and wish to uh, see more of these in the future. So once again, thank you very much for your presence today. See you next time.